Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are going to be doing another dinosaur hybrid. Last one we did was a raptor gecko hybrid. We used a leopard gecko along with a raptor and made... Um, if I can find a photo, I'll throw it up here, but we made this little guy. <laughs> so I thought it'd be really cool to actually mix a raptor with a macaw parrot. That way we can go more feathery with this raptor and have a little bit more fun with colors and stuff. Anyways, let's get started. Okay, so the first thing that I'm going to work on is going to be the clay head. Now I want a really even blend between the two creatures. I don't want it to look too much like a raptor or too much like a parrot. So let's see what we can do. I'm thinking the best way to start is to probably focus more on the raptor side and then to like paratify it. <laughs> Anyways, I have my lump of tin foil completely covered in clay, I've blended it out, and now I'm just trying to focus on getting the basic shape that I want for the head. So I'm going to lay out where I want the eyes to go with my glass pieces, and I'm also going to mark out where the mouth is going to be. Now my idea for the mouth is to have it like a normal dinosaur mouth, but to kind of make it look like it eventually would evolve into a beak. So I'm going to kind of like add some texture more to the top of the snout and change it up a little bit there. But for now, I'm just going for the basic shape of a raptor's mouth and then maybe adding some scale textures around the lips. So all I'm doing right now is just adding more and more texture to the face to get it to look how I want. Um, I might start cutting off a little bit of excess clay around the base of the head because I noticed it was just a little bit too thick. And then I'm just going to clean that up and we can do a bake. So I'm going to put the clay head in the oven for about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. And then once it comes out of the oven and is cool to touch, I'm going to remove those glass pieces and replace them with the glass eyes that I want to use. I thought these light blue ones with the round pupil would look really nice and kind of go with the parrot theme. And then I'm going to switch over to my epoxy sculpt. That way we can start building up the clay around the eyes and making the eyelids. I'm going to break up my clay into different sections to make it look more scaly and to go with the rest of the texture on the face. I'm also going to use a dotting tool to kind of rough up the rest of the clay that doesn't really have much of a scaling texture. That way I can make some smaller scale patterns. Once I'm happy with how the clay head looks, I'm just going to set it somewhere off to the side and let it cure for the remaining time that it needs. Usually it takes about 24 to 48 hours. While that's curing, I'm going to start working on the clay feet. Now my idea is to kind of go more parody with these feet. I want to have the toes laid out that way. I don't want to do a normal raptor foot. So I have my wire frame set up and I've got two toes in the front of each foot and two toes in the back. For the claws, I'm going to be using some resin claws that I've made. I have a mold for this that I've made and I like to make them a lot so I just make them out of resin. Plus, claws tend to break very easily when made out of clay so I like to make them out of resin now. And so I'm just attaching those and then I'm going to start adding clay to the wire frame. 
So to make it easier, I figured it would be best to work on the toes first and get them completely sculpted and then to add clay to the rest of the wireframe for the leg portion. So I'm going to cover up the wireframe that is for the toes and then I'm going to start adding balls of clay on the tops of them to use those for the scales. So I'm just going to lay those out and then I'm going to use my tools to sculpt in all the extra detail that I want. Once I have the toes done, I'm going to do a pre-bake, so nothing too too long, I'm just going to put them in the oven for about 25 minutes. This should be enough time to harden the clay so I don't have to worry about accidentally bumping anything. But it isn't enough to completely bake the clay, so you can put it in the oven for a longer bake later. And then once it's out of the oven and it's cooled, I can start adding clay to the rest of the wireframe. The leg portion I'm going to make pretty decently thick to kind of go along with the thickness of the toes. I'm going to get everything completely covered and blended together and then I'm going to continue the scale pattern down the front of the leg. I'm going to continue our baking. I'm going to put the legs in the oven for about 45 to 55 minutes this time. Same temperature, 275 Fahrenheit. Once it's out of the oven and is cool to touch, I kind of want to reinforce the strength of the toes just to make sure that they're not super fragile. So I'm going to start adding some epoxy sculpt to the underside of them and just kind of just reinforcing them a little bit so I don't have to worry about them breaking. Once the extra clay has finished curing, I can then start painting everything. So let's get started on painting the face first. So the type of macaw that I want to do is going to be the red, blue, yellows, and greens kind of macaw. So the main color is going to be red. So I'm going to get the head primered red first, and then we can start adding extra colors to the face. So one thing that's really cool about macaws, they have this like white section around their face that doesn't really have much feathers. And I kind of wanted to do the same thing with our raptor parrot, but I wanted to kind of change up the location of it. So I figured lower on the snout would look very interesting, kind of in the little like divots that we have on the side of the face. And then for adding the details of the beak to make the snout look a little bit more beak-like, I'm going to start by painting the upper portion black. And then I want to fade it into kind of a creamy khaki color. So I'm going to start adding some grays to it and then slowly add more of that khaki color to it until I get a nice fade from one color to the other. Now before I start doing this, since I'm already working with black, I need to start adding some shadows to the face. So I'm going to start watering down my black paint and kind of go into all the different cracks and crevices and just kind of mess around with blending it into the other colors and cleaning it up.
And then after I have my black faded to khaki, I want to go in and add some extra details around the edge of that color. I want to break it up and make it look a little bit more crackled and more beak-like. So I'm going to start using some black and make some line details around that. I'm going to do a few extra touch-ups here and there, and then all I need to do is clean off the paint that got on our glass eyes. Now for painting the legs, what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to primer them a black. So I'm going to paint everything completely black and then I'm going to start adding our colors on top of this. That way we don't have to deal with messing with the shadows or anything in between all of those scales. It's just going to make it a lot easier. Now while I'm painting these, I'm also going to be painting some resin pieces that I made for the wings. So I wanted to have a few claws sticking out of them so I had a mold that worked really well and I figured I could just paint these to go with it. So we're going to be painting them basically the same way that we're going to do the feet. So once my black layer has completely dried, I'm going to take some gray and I'm going to go lightly over the entire foot. So I'm just going to lightly brush over everything, that way I can get a tiny bit of a highlight on all that texture. Then I'm going to switch over to an even lighter gray and I'm going to start going over the scales, starting with the tips of the toes and working my way up. And then I can take a little bit of khaki and I can add an extra highlight to the section of the foot. So I figured right above the toe joints would work really well for this. So I'm just going to add a little bit there. And then the last thing that I need to do is just clean up the claws. Um, we did get a little bit of the gray on them, so I'm just going to clean them up and make them a solid black. Okay, so now that all of our clay pieces are done, we can start working on the sewing. And we have a lot of different colors to work with. Now for the pattern, um, I'm actually using pretty much the exact same pattern that I used to make our gecko raptor, except I made some alterations to it for the tail. Now on the pattern, you can see how I've drawn out where I want different sections to go. So we're gonna work on sewing those pieces together first starting with the side of the body. So I've got reds, blues, and greens, and I'm just gonna get all of these layers together. That way we can have a left and a right side piece for the body. Now you'll notice once I have all the pieces sewn together that I've left holes on the sides of the body where we're gonna connect the arms. And then for the arms, I have the upper portion a red and the bottom section a greenish yellow. And I'm just gonna connect these pieces for each side of each arm and then we can take a left and right for each arm and sew down the front. Once we have both arms put together, we can then take them and sew them in place on the body where we have those holes placed. You'll notice that the back leg, at least the outer portion, is already connected to the side of the body. So we just need to take the inside portion and we're just going to sew down the front of the other piece, connecting the two pieces together. Then we just need to add the tail. For the tail, I'm going to have it start off with that green color, and then it's going to go blue and red. So I'm going to get those colors sewn together, and then we can sew the tail to the end of the body. And then the last piece that we have is the belly piece, which we're not going to add to the rest of the fabric just yet but I do have it broken up between red and blue. Okay, so now that all of our sewing is done, we can start putting our doll together. 
So I have a wire frame set up and what we're gonna do is we're gonna take the fabric for the body and run it over the wire frame. So all the wires for the legs and the arms are just gonna go through that fabric. Then we can take our clay head and we can glue it to the end of the wire for the neck. Once that's in place, I can then take the fabric for the neck and start gluing it around the base of the head. I'm also going to take that belly piece and glue it to the bottom section. I'm going to let that dry a little bit and then we're going to start stuffing and closing up the body. So I'm just going to sew from the top portion of the neck on each side until we get to the back legs. Once we get to the legs, I'm going to take our clay feet and I'm going to add them to the wire frame. So I'm just going to use a thinner gauge wire and wrap them in place and then we can start gluing the fabric around the bases of our feet. I'm then going to start sewing the back of the legs closed and I'm going to start stuffing them and the rest of the body. Once the legs are sewn together, I can start working on the tail. So I'm just going to start stuffing the tail as well until I get to the very end of it. Now at this point, I realized I really wasn't going to get him to balance on two legs. There was something just wrong with how I set everything up. So I'm going to redesign how he's going to stand, plus the way the body is shaped, I think it works better to have him lean more forward. So what I'm going to do is I need to extend the length of the arms. So I'm going to take some blue fabric and cut it, that way we can add some more fabric and extend the length of them. That way he can actually put his weight on those as well, because right now they're too short. After I get that fixed, I can then take our resin claws and I can add them to the wire frame. Now before we stuff and close up our arms, I want to add feathers to them to make them look a little bit more wing-like. So what I did to make the feathers was I cut out the feather shape out of my normal fabric and I added a little bit of fabric glue to stiffen them up. So I have all these little feathers cut out in red and blue, and I'm just going to start sewing them together into a pair of wings. That way we can attach them to the arms. So I'm going to layer all of these feathers and get everything sewn together, and then we can start closing up the arm around the wings. So one thing I want to do to the body real quick is I want to shave everything and just kind of shape the fur just a tiny bit. I'm not going to go super short anywhere because I still want him pretty fluffy, but he's just a little bit too fluffy in some areas. And then the last thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to fur the face. So I'm not going to do anything too drastic. I'm just going to add a little bit of cut fur fabric pieces to the top of the head and the bottom. And then I'm going to take fur trimmings to clean up the seam. Because you can kind of see where the clay meets the fur fabric. And I want to kind of blend that together a little bit. Okay guys, and here is our Parrot Raptor. I had so much fun with this project. It came out a little differently than I originally planned, but I'm still really happy with it. I love all the colors.
Now I'm going to have my Raptor on my website, so if anyone is interested in buying them, you can check the links down below for that. Also while you're down there, you'll notice a bunch of other links to a bunch of different art supplies. These are a lot of things I like to use in my videos, and I figured it would just be helpful if you guys were curious on what I use. Now these are affiliated links, so if you do uh, buy anything through them, it does help support the channel. Anyways guys, thank you so much for watching, make sure to like, subscribe, do all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!